Hello and welcome to this special module on physical education. Today we will be discussing about the various efficiency tests that are being conducted to analyze the strength of a person's metabolic and physical endurance. Let's have a look. Lung function tests check how well your lungs work. The tests can find lung problems, measure how serious they are and check to see how well treatment for a lung disease is working. The tests look at how much air your lungs can hold, how quickly you can move air in and out of your lungs, how well your lungs put oxygen into and remove carbon dioxide from your blood. The types of lung function tests include spirometry, gas diffusion, body plethysmography, inhalation challenge test, exercise stress test. You may also hear the tests called pulmonary function tests or PFTs. Lung function results are measured directly in some tests and are calculated in others. No single test can determine all of the lung function values, so more than one type of test may be done. Some of the tests may be repeated after you inhale medicine that enlarges your airways, that is bronchodilator. Spirometry Spirometry is the most common lung function test. It measures how much and how quickly you can move air out of your lungs. You breathe into a mouthpiece attached to a machine called a spirometer. The machine records your results. Spirometry can measure many different things about the way you breathe. These include how much air you can exhale, how much air you can breathe in and out in one minute and the amount of air left in your lungs after a normal exhale. Gas diffusion tests. Gas diffusion tests measure the amount of oxygen and other gases that move through the lungs air sacs per minute. These tests let you know how well gases are being absorbed into your blood from your lungs. Gas diffusion tests include Arterial blood gases. This test shows the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your bloodstream. Carbon monoxide diffusion capacity, also called DLCO. This test measures how well your lungs transfer a small amount of carbon monoxide into the blood. Two different methods are used for this test. Single breath or breath holding method. You take a breath of air from a container. The air contains a very small amount of carbon monoxide. Measurements are taken as you breathe in. Steady state method. You do the same thing but measurements are taken as you breathe out. Now lung function tests. Body plethysmography may be used to measure total lung capacity that is TLC. This is the total amount of air your lungs can hold. For this test, you sit inside a small airtight room. You breathe through a mouthpiece while pressure and airflow measurements are collected. Residual volume RV. This is the amount of air that remains in your lungs after you exhale as much as you can. For this test, you sit inside the booth and breathe while the pressure of the booth is monitored. You may need to breathe through a mouthpiece while you are in the booth. Inhalation Challenge Tests Inhalation challenge tests are done to measure how your airways respond to substances that may be causing asthma or wheezing. These tests are also called provocation studies. During the test, you inhale increasing amounts of a substance through a nebulizer. This is a device that uses a face mask or a mouthpiece to deliver the substance in a fine mist 
aerosol. Spirometry readings are taken to evaluate lung function before, during and after you inhale the substance. Exercise stress tests Exercise stress tests look at how exercise affects your lungs. Spirometry readings are done after exercise and again at rest. Multiple breath washout test The multiple breath washout test is done to check people who have cystic fibrosis. For this test, you breathe through a tube. First, you breathe air that contains a tracer gas. Then you breathe regular air while the amount of tracer gas you exhale is monitored. Test results are reported as Lung Clearance Index LCI. A high LCI value means that the lungs are not working well. Now why these tests are being done? Lung function tests are done to find the cause of breathing problems, find certain lung diseases such as asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, check a person's lung function before surgery, check the lungs of someone who is regularly exposed to chemical or other things that can damage the lungs, check how well treatments for lung diseases are working. Now, spirometry description. Spirometry assesses the integrated mechanical function of the lung, chest wall, the respiratory muscles by measuring the total volume of air exhaled from a full lung. Total lung capacity, TLC, to maximal expiration, that is residual volume. This volume, the first vital capacity and the first expiratory volume in the first second of the forceful exhalation that is FEV1 should be repeatable to within 0.15 liter upon repeat efforts unless the largest value for either parameter is less than 1 liter. In this case the expected repeatability is to within 0.1 liter of the largest value. The patient is instructed to inhale as much as possible and then exhale rapidly and forcefully for as long as flow can be maintained. The patient should exhale for at least 6 seconds. At the end of the first exhalation, the patient should again inhale fully as rapidly as possible. The FVC should then be compared with that inhaled volume to verify that the forced expiratory maneuver did indeed start from full inflation. Reduction in the amount of air exhaled forcefully in the first second or the forced exhalation that is FEV1 may reflect reduction in the maximum inflation of the lungs TLC, obstruction of airways, respiratory muscle weakness or submaximal expiratory force due to poor coaching, poor understanding or malingering. Airway obstruction is the most common cause of reduction in FEV1. Airflow obstruction may be secondary to bronchospasm, airway inflammation, loss of lung elastic recoil, increased secretion in the airway or any combination of these cause. Response of FEV1 to inhaled Bronchodilators is used to assess the reversibility of airway obstruction, although it is now widely appreciated that a response showing a lack of a significant increase in FEV1 does not indicate the patient will not benefit clinically from bronchodilator therapy. A significant increase in the inspiratory capacity IC and or vital capacity VC after bronchodilator therapy can occur even when FEV1 fails to show a significant change. Indications Spirometry is used to establish baseline lung function, evaluate dyspnea, detect pulmonary disease, 
monitor effects of therapies used to treat respiratory disease, evaluate respiratory impairment, evaluate operative risk, and perform surveillance for occupational related lung disease. Now, contraindications. Relative contraindications for spirometry include hemoptysis of unknown origin, pneumothorax, unstable angina pectoris, recent myocardial infraction, thoracic aneurysms, abdominal aneurysms, cerebral aneurysms, recent eye surgery within two weeks due to increased intraocular pressure during forced expiration, recent abdominal or thoracic surgical procedures, and patients with history of syncope associated with forced exhalation. Patients with active tuberculosis should not be tested. Patient care or preparations Two choices are available with respect to bronchodilator and medication used prior to testing. Patients may withhold oral and inhaled bronchodilators to establish baseline lung function and evaluate maximum bronchodilator response, or they may continue taking medication as prescribed. If medications are withheld, a risk of exacerbation of bronchial spasm exists. Interpretation Interpretation of spirometry results should begin with an assessment of test quality. Failure to meet performance standards can result in unreliable test results. The American Thoracic Society defines acceptable spirometry as an expiratory effort that has the following characteristics. Pulmonary function tests require patients to successfully perform respiratory maneuvers in a standardized manner in order to obtain clinically meaningful results. Spirometry is perhaps the most technically and physically demanding. The patient is required to inhale as fully as possible, exhale with as much as force as possible and continue their expiratory effort until they empty their lungs as completely as possible or are unable to continue. The comments of technologists administering the test can assist the interpreting physician in determining if the results of a testing session that fail to meet some of the standards can still provide clinically useful data. Characteristics of acceptable spirometry efforts are as follows. Starts from full inflation shows minimal hesitation at the start of the first expiration, extrapolated volume EV is less than 5% of FVC or 0.15L, whichever is larger, shows an explosive start of the first exhalation, time to peak flow no greater than 0.12 seconds, shows no evidence of cuff in the first second of forced exhalation meets one of the three criteria that define a valid end of test. Smooth curvilinear rise of the volume time tracing to a plateau of at least one second's duration. If a test fails to exhibit a expiratory plateau, a forced expiratory time that is FET of 15 seconds or when the patient cannot or should not continue forced exhalation for valid medical reason. Comprehensive treatment of technical acceptability of spirometry test results is beyond the scope of this lecture. In patients that have significant loss of lung elastic recoil, that is pulmonary emphysema, COPD, spirometry may show negative effort dependence of first expiratory flow. The effort that has the highest peak expiratory effort may produce a low FEV1 because of the dynamic compression of the airways that results from the loss of elastic recoil support of airways, that is, characteristics of emphysema. In this circumstance, reporting the highest FEV1 
coming from an effort with submaximal expiratory effort can lead to confusing results, particularly if a setting of assessing spirometric response to bronchodilators. Although not yet a spirometry acceptability standard, it appears that when reporting the FEV1, considering only efforts that have a time to peak flow, that is TPEF, less than or equal to 0.12 seconds, helps eliminate this effect. This parameter can be displayed on the most laboratory based spirometry testing systems. Additionally, the two largest value for FVC and the two largest value for FEV1 in the same testing session should vary by no more than 0.15 liter and 0.1 liter if the largest value is greater than 1 liter. Inspection of the volume time tracing aids in identification of early termination of expiration by evaluating the presence of an expiratory plateau. In the absence of an expiratory plateau, a 12 to 15 second expiratory time ensures the quality of FVC. Inspection of the start of the volume time tracing can identify a hesitant start, which can result in a falsely low FEV1. Repeatability of the FVC and FEV1 helps ensure that results truly represent the patient's lung function. Attention should be focused on the repeatability of two key parameters FVC and FEV1. In the United States, normal values and lower limits of normal defined by Hankinson et al. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey NHANES 3 predicted set has been recommended by the American Thoracic Society ATS. These provide specific equations for whites, African Americans and Mexican Americans. If the patient belongs to another ethnic group, the predicted values and the lower limits of normal provided by whites by Hankinson et al should be reduced by 12% by multiplying the predicted value by 0.88 before comparison with the patient's result. In 2012, the Global Lung Initiative, that is GLI, a task force of the European Respiratory Society, published a report that provides normative values for males and females from aged 3 to 95 years across a wide range of ethnicities. Use of these predicted values for spirometry has been supported globally, including the endorsements from the European Respiratory Society, the ATS, the American College of Chest Physicians, the Thoracic Society of Australia and New Zealand, the Australian and the New Zealand Society of Respiratory Science, the Asian Pacific Society for Respirology. The report is in accordance with the previously published recommendation of the ATS that called for the elimination of using a fixed percent of predicted cut point to determine normality and a fixed lower limit of normal of the FEV1 oblique FVC ratio to identify airway obstruction, both of which have been shown to result in significant misclassification of spirometry results. Lung function tests check how well your lungs work. The tests can find lung problems, measure how serious they are and check to see how well treatment for a lung disease is working. The tests look at how much air your lungs can hold, how quickly you can move air in and out of your lungs, how well your lungs put oxygen into and remove carbon dioxide from your blood. The types of lung function tests include spirometry, gas diffusion, body plethysmography, inhalation challenge test, exercise stress test. You may also hear the tests called pulmonary function tests or PFTs. 
lung function results are measured directly in some tests and are calculated in others. No single test can determine all of the lung function values, so more than one type of test may be done. Some of the tests may be repeated after you inhale medicine that enlarges your airways, that is bronchodilator. Spirometry Spirometry is the most common lung function test. It measures how much and how quickly you can move air out of your lungs. You breathe into a mouthpiece attached to a machine called a spirometer. The machine records your results. Spirometry can measure many different things about the way you breathe. These include how much air you can exhale, how much air you can breathe in and out in one minute and the amount of air left in your lungs after a normal exhale. Gas diffusion tests. Gas diffusion tests measure the amount of oxygen and other gases that move through the lungs air sacs per minute. These tests let you know how well gases are being absorbed into your blood from your lungs. Gas diffusion tests include arterial blood gases. This test shows the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your bloodstream. Carbon monoxide diffusion capacity, also called DLCO. This test measures how well your lungs transfer a small amount of carbon monoxide into the blood. Two different methods are used for this test. Single breath or breath holding method. You take a breath of air from a container. The air contains a very small amount of carbon monoxide. Measurements are taken as you breathe in. Steady state method. You do the same thing but measurements are taken as you breathe out. Now lung function tests. Body plethysmography may be used to measure total lung capacity that is TLC. This is the total amount of air your lungs can hold. For this test, you sit inside a small airtight room. You breathe through a mouthpiece while pressure and airflow measurements are collected. Residual volume RV This is the amount of air that remains in your lungs after you exhale as much as you can. For this test, you sit inside the booth and breathe while the pressure of the booth is monitored. You may need to breathe through a mouthpiece while you are in the booth. Inhalation Challenge Tests Inhalation challenge tests are done to measure how your airways respond to substances that may be causing asthma or wheezing. These tests are also called provocation studies. During the test, you inhale increasing amounts of a substance through a nebulizer. This is a device that uses a face mask or a mouthpiece to deliver the substance in a fine mist aerosol. Spirometry readings are taken to evaluate lung function before, during and after you inhale the substance. Exercise Stress Tests Exercise stress tests look at how exercise affects your lungs. Spirometry readings are done after exercise and again at rest. So in this episode, we have seen the various physical tests that can be administered to a person for analyzing his physical and metabolic endurance. And with the help of instrument, we can actually find out whether this person has got that ability to become a good athlete or not. I hope that the information that was provided was of some use to all of you. Thank you so much for watching.